do you have the same sort of data on different sheets? And you want to get an overview. You might have different teams on different sheets. You might have different months on different sheets and you want to consolidate it all. Well, I'll show you three different ways from the easy to the slightly more complicated. I'll show you all three. Let's go. So I'll show you the three different examples and then we'll show you the solution, how to do this. Um, if your data is in a nice table, so we've got a table here for team A and they're all typing their, their data in or updating the sheet and then team B go to this table and I've put it in a completely different spot just to show this benefit of having tables. It doesn't matter where they are on the sheet. Okay, They enter their data and team C they're entering their data and because this is Excel online they can all be doing it at the same time as well. All right, all good. We want to consolidate that data into one report and we can slice and dice it. So we'll do that. And then let me show you this. We'll do it again, but a slightly harder version where the data isn't in tables. It's just a little bit more of a pain. And then the final one, the more complicated one is where your data is laid out horizontally, apples, bananas, and pears, and you've got this extra heading. So that's a, a trickier one again. So we'll work through all three, won't take too long. Um, you know, if you don't know about tables, in Power BI Desktop, Control T turns your data into tables. Uh, in the browser, Control L because Control T creates a new tab. Um, and once you do create a table, make sure you go to Table Design and give it a sensible name. Like I've called this one Table Team A, and I've called the next one over here Table Team B. And let me double check over here. Yep, Table Team C. Okay. Right, so I want to consolidate these tables. So I'm going to actually go into um, Excel desktop and you can do this with Power BI as well. Okay, it's all about Power Query. So I'm in Excel desktop. Um, this feature doesn't exist yet in terms of Power Query in the web browser, but it's coming, it's coming. So here we go. We're going to go get data, but actually get data from file from Excel workbook doesn't work if you want to connect to an Excel file on SharePoint or OneDrive. You have to actually have your synced copy on your C drive or on your network for this to work. So this isn't an option here. I want to connect to the SharePoint or OneDrive version. So I'm going to say from web. And this whole process is really weird. Um, I've got a whole video on it. A little link will pop up. Right, so we need the URL. So where's that URL? Well, if I bring back up my file here, and I go back to the SharePoint folder, okay? This is the crazy process, all right? What do you have to do is you can click on this little dot, give the tick, go to the I, and then scroll down and click on this path. I know it's madness, but that's what you do, okay? Click on that path. That's how you get the path to that Excel file. Okay, put that in here, click okay. Now, a pop-up will appear saying um, sign in with an organizational account. Make sure you pick the organizational account and then sign in, okay? And then it takes you to this screen. So here's my three tables. Now, what you're most likely to do, and it's not the right thing here, is to tick this and then tick these three tables. But don't do that, okay? Don't do that. What you do is you right click on the folder at the top here and say transform. Okay. I wish that was more discoverable. You know, this is part of the trick really. And then you get a full list of all the objects inside that Excel file. You've got all the different tables down here, the different sheet names, okay. Now I just want these three tables. So I'm actually just gonna do a filter. Okay, let me zoom in a second. I'm gonna do a filter for everything that begins with TBL, team. So I could right click on here, text filter, begins with. Oh, this puts in TBL team A, but I can just change that here to TBL team, press enter. And there's all my TBL teams. Okay, there's other ways of doing that, but this means that if somebody adds another team, to an, you know, another table, this will get pulled in as well automatically. Right, so what do I want? 
Well, I'll just keep the name here and the data, right click, remove other columns. Okay, don't need anything else. And I can just expand this out. And there we go, okay. Use original column name as prefix. No, thank you. Otherwise I'll prefix everything with the word data, which you don't want and click okay. And it's done. Okay, how beautiful is that? So here we go. We've got um, customer, uh, change that to text. We've got date, make that a date. And we've got units, make that whole number or decimal. And just rename this as consolidation or something sensible. Okay, then we go close and load, close and load two. Pick a, come over here, pick a table um, into, let's say the existing worksheet just here and click OK. And there's our data. Okay, beautiful. And it's refreshable, but you can right click and refresh whenever you want. So let's say there was no data, right click, refresh. It goes off to that SharePoint folder, brings in all the latest data. Too easy. Okay. So the next example is getting the data from the sheet. Okay, so let me just bring back up the file. Um, here we go. So we're gonna grab the data from, um, sorry, from this one, from the sheet and from team B, etc. Okay, we're gonna grab it from there. So they're not in tables. And I'll show you a little trick, a little hack, okay? Right, so um, I could go from web and put the path in again and all that business, but given that I've already connected to it, I can go to recent sources instead. So on to recent sources, and there it is. I can double click on that, and then I'm back into the file. And I'm going to go to this one, right click, transform data. Now, a good little tip um, is maybe just rename this as a starting point and call it something like SharePoint file. Okay, little tip. And then reference that for doing all the subsequent steps. Just can make it easier to make a change in the future if you need to point to a different file or something. Um, so right click, reference. You don't have to do this step, but I'd recommend it. Okay, it makes things easier to debug in the future. So this is going to be the um, sheet console rather than the table consolidation. Okay. Uh, right. And we're just going to grab um, the sheets called team A, team B and team C. And again, you could specifically filter for them or you could, um, like I could just click on this drop down and tick them. Or you could say, text begins with or contains or something like this okay so i'm going to say can begins with team space click ok all right and we're good so all i need is i'd like to keep the name of the of the table oh sorry of the sheet and remove other columns and then you ex watch what happens i expand this out untick use original column name as prefix and click OK and annoyingly it's a bit like this because the headings haven't been promoted so you see the headings over and over again so this is the the bit of the pain um, you could promote headers but then this column would be in the column name and that might not be what you want so the simplest way would be to rename all these columns you know with customer date and then just right click text filter does not equal. However, check out this little trick, right? Check out this trick. I'm going to delete those little steps. Okay, I'm back here. And I'm going to go back to my SharePoint file to this source step. And this little beauty here, this null, okay? What is that? Well, if I get rid of the comma and put the comma back in to bring up the IntelliSense, it says use headers. Okay, so if I say true and press enter, 
nothing really seems to change. Okay, and if I go to my sheet consolidation and I expand this out this time, the headings are there. Okay, click OK. Just like tables, it's auto promoted those headers. Lovely little trick. I can't remember. I wish I could remember who I saw that off so I could give them credit. I'm really, I honestly can't remember, but awesome trick. Um, okay, and then you would just change the values, close and apply. All right, well, what, what if it's sort of one step messier? Okay, feel free to stop there with this video, but if you want to see the real fancy trick, the custom function to really do whatever you want with each sheet, and keep watching for a few more minutes. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go to, um, well, tell you what I can do. I can just reference my SharePoint file. So right click, reference. Okay, and this is going to be the messy console. Okay, so this will be the messy console. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and reference this again and turn this into a little function that cleans up one table of data, okay? And actually, before I do, I'll just go back to my messy console and I'll do my filter down to these FNs. So again, I'm just gonna, oh, this time I'll just click on this and I'll just say, look, it is just FN demo A, B and C. I'll just physically tick those. Always read your formula bar to make sure it's saying you pick the ones you really meant to pick, okay? Perfect. Right, so that's my starting point. Then this is going to be my cleanup query. So I'll just call this transform. Okay, and I'm going to go into one table, one of these sheets. Okay, so I'm going to go into this table and here's my data. So this is the one where we've got the words going across like apples, bananas, pears. We've got an extra heading that's been promoted. That's not what we're after. So I'm going to get rid of this change type step. Now see my heading has been promoted. That's because back in that other SharePoint query back here, I changed that option to true. Okay, if I didn't have it set to true, then it wouldn't have, it would still be promoted, but I'd have a step in there. Um, let me go back here. So I want to demote the headers in this case. So I'm going to change this to use header as first row. Okay, I don't want that change type step. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to delete, remove the first row. And there's other ways of doing this. Okay, but this is the simple way, but make sure it's, if you're, only do this if you're sure it's always going to be the first row. Otherwise, do it a different way. Then I'm going to say use first row as headers. I'm going to delete the change type step again. And now apples, bananas and pears are the same thing. So I want to flip those around into a column called fruit. If you ever see the same thing, unpivot. OK, so customer is in a column. Date is in a column. Right click, unpivot other columns. Beautiful. OK, this is going to be fruit. And this is going to be units. OK, you can do the change type here if you need to. But honestly, at this stage, there is no point in doing this, of changing those types. I want to turn this into a function to run down against every, every sheet as the data is pulled in. OK, so how do you do that? Well, you need to do one extra step. You need to add a parameter. And what the parameter is that I need is under this navigation step, I'm just looking at this FN demo A. I'm just going to copy that, okay? FN demo A, that's the name of the sheet. And I want to put pass the different sheet names in there instead of hard coding that in. So I'm going to go to manage parameters, new parameter. And I'm going to give it a name. You can call it whatever you want. I'll call it a sheet name and it's going to be text and the current value is that and I click OK. And then here's my little function, my little uh, parameter. I go back to my transform step, back to my navigation step. 
and replace this code here with sheet name. And I press enter and it'll still work because it's passing that word FN demo A in here. Now I can right click on the transform step. Okay, create function. Function name is FN transform. Okay. And now it's created this little group for me with my transform step, my parameter and my function in it, which is beautiful. And those two things, the transform and the function are linked. So if I ever need to make a tweak to this transform, it'll automatically update the function, which is perfect. And now I go to my um, messy console here. Okay. And I can say, right. So this, this um, transform function, its source is messy console. Okay. So I need to actually go back and potentially reference um, a copy of this. So I will right click and reference it. Okay. And this could be called my um, console three. All I want are these two columns, remove other columns. And now add column, invoke custom function. Okay. Which function do you want? Well, I've only got one of them. It's called FN transform. And where do I get that name to pass in? Well, from this name column, that's the sheet name, okay? Click okay. And here is my tidied up tables. All right, and I can basically right click. Well, I just need that one and this one. Remove other columns and then expand this out. And there's every sheet tidied up and then I would set the column names. So that's a more advanced one, okay? Creating a custom function to do your tidy ups. Not too bad, you know, but a step up. All right, let me know what you think. Do you find that useful? Did you know about these, some of these little tricks? Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you share this with other people and let people know about the channel. Love having your comments and feedback, and I'll catch you later.